Hello, this is Joe McGee. You know, we've been doing seminars across the country for years. Seminars on marriage, parenting, men, money, and family. We want to encourage you to email us and let us know if this podcast has helped you. Or maybe you have joined us live at one of our seminars. If you have a testimony, you just want to tell us what God's doing in your life, please email us at mail at joemcgeeministries.com or you can contact us through our website, joemcgeeministries.com. There you will find helpful articles and tools to help you grow in God, your marriage, and your family. We love you guys. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Joe McGee. Welcome to our Common Sense Wednesday, where we talk about just everyday common sense things you really ought to know before you leave home at 18 or whenever you leave home. There's just some great information that you know. Now, I tell people, you're not going to know everything by the time you leave home. But she should know most important stuff. So well, you know, we got a great list that we taught when I was working with high school kids years ago and with our own kids uh, who are all adults now and out on their own, grown and out of college and uh, uh, professionally employed and getting their own paychecks. But there are some things you really want to know about. And so today we're going to talk about, because uh, uh, I grew up in a very big family, about you know loving and caring for other people. And uh, there was not an opportunity to be selfish. You know, we had a big family. My dad had 12 brothers and sisters. So did my father-in-law. And so people were busy all the time. There's somebody to see, somebody to visit, uh, something to do. I mean, it, it was it was pretty much constant. And so uh, uh, I know every weekend uh, we go visit an aunt or an uncle. Uh, every fourth weekend or long weekend, we'd, we'd drive 60 miles up to the mountains to visit my grandmother. And my dad would go up there and he'd have a long weekend, have four days off. So we'd go stay at my grandma's house and dad would, he'd work on the roof or, or fix something. Maybe the stove wasn't working right or change the light bulbs or check the plumbing. Uh, we, we've had to work on the septic tank and, uh, coal oil furnace just stopped working. And so dad was just sort of the maintenance guy. So I thought that was normal. I thought it was normal to maintain your house, uh, and family members that couldn't take care of themselves. We had several aunts that were uh, way past retirement years, and one lived in an old, 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 you can't even imagine how old looking that house was, uh, behind my grandmother's house, just up on the side of the hill. And, uh, man, if that, you, you struck a match, that thing would have burnt down in five seconds. But that's where she lived. Uh, she had no central heat in there. She had a small pot belly stove. Uh, she cooked her eggs and enough grease to... You know, to, you know, cook two porks, you know, and she'd crack those eggs and it, they'd be floating in that, in that pork fat in that pan. But she used that same pan all the time. So we just learned a lot of stuff growing up with an older family and growing up in the country. And we saw things that most people never see. So we're going to talk about loving and caring for others today. So it's just a list of common sense things you really ought to know before you leave home. Number one, have you offered to help uh, your mom or somebody in the neighborhood with somebody that's got a newborn baby? Uh, or maybe somebody's elderly. Have you ever thought about somebody besides yourself? Now, when I grew up in the community, you know, we had uh, people that were retired down below us, and I think he was the janitor for the church and the janitor for a local school. Uh, but he's really retired, and uh, him and his wife are older, and so we go down and help them on the weekend, done stuff for them. I'd go mow their grass and weed it around, and, uh, which, uh, and she'd always make great peach cobbler. You know, she's a great cook. So we just thought it was normal to participate, check on your neighbors. Uh, there was a time when we knew our neighbors. We knew their name. We knew their relatives. And if they're sick, if they're doing well. And so learn how to care for other people today. We don't want to know who our neighbor is. We don't want to talk to anybody. It's just changed. Have you ever held a baby under a month old or uh, talked to him real softly? Do you know how to hold a baby? Well, you know, I was the father of eight, six kids. And so my six kids... Like I said, we had our first two within the first three years of marriage. So it was five years before we had our third one, another five years before we had our fourth one. Then we had three right in a row. So uh, my older kids knew how to take care of younger kids, had to change a diaper, you know, how to clean them up, how to give them a bath. I thought that was normal. You know, when I grew up, what you did, you, you just did whatever whatever needed to be done. No, It's not, well, that's not my job. Nobody ever said that's not my job. If it needs to be done, it's now, it's now your job. Put your hand in here to get something done. They learned to help out uh, the younger siblings with their homework, science fair projects. It was just part of what you did. Number three, uh, have you ever fed a baby under six months old? You know, I mean food. When they get started eating solid stuff, 
That's when you know the diaper changed to smelly. <laughs> Up when it's just milk, the diaper doesn't smell. But man, when that solid food goes in, when you start putting that Gerber's in there, Woo, we're going to smell the house up. It changed everything. Uh, uh, and we have successfully quieted a baby that's crying, you know, uh, because my older kids learn, you know, some get, might be colicky. We might just haven't slept well. We might be too tired. We've had a long, busy day. We lived well out in the country, and even when we had those babies, uh, those last three in two and a half years. Somebody's holding the baby. Hey, can you, hey, get your sister. See if you can quiet her down. See if we can bounce her a little bit and rock her back and forth. And so it was so good to grow up in a big family. You learn about life growing up in a bigger family. You just did. Uh, uh, do you know uh, half a dozen nursery rhymes? And we always had storybooks around the house. And so we tell the kids, hey, read a story to them. Read this to your younger sister. So all my kids did well in school because they'd been read to so much. Reading was never a challenge for them. Now, they loved to read because they'd been read to, so they were fascinated. Every time an older sibling opened a book, ooh, hey, hey, sis, read this to me. Hey, read this to me. Hey, would you read this to me again? And they loved stories like that. We offered to help out in the daycare facility you know, for kids whose mothers work. And uh, I told my uh, a couple of my kids, one worked as a candy striper. Um, they were going to college. I said, the local hospital, you volunteer as a candy striper. I don't want you to have nothing to do. I want you to be busy. I always wanted my kids busy, tired, and happy. So volunteers a candy striper. And uh, one, third, she, she, one, one of my daughters thought she wanted to go to, into medical science. But working for a week as a candy striper in an emergency room, uh, she realized she can't stand the sight of blood. And so every time she see the sight of blood, she'd pass out. So they sent her home after the three days of passing out. Hey, I don't know what you're going to do in life, but being around medical is not going to be one of them. So eventually she turned out to be a really good uh, 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 working with accounting. She's a accounting major and worked in banking. Nice, clean numbers, clean paper, no blood. <laughs> and so every child has strengths and weaknesses. And our job is kind of help them find out. Well, you learn by helping other people, by volunteering. By doing stuff. That's how you learn what you're good at. You don't sit around and some angel shows up when you turn 18. Hey, you are good at this. You thou shalt do this. Well, you usually find out by doing stuff. So we always had the kids volunteer, um, uh, nursing homes, hospitals, uh, do volunteer. You know, the candy strapper thing was a great thing, the way to find out stuff. I mean, success encouraged a friend or a relative to get medical attention when they needed it, but they're afraid to. And we've all had relatives like this. You know, you see something. Hey, you don't look good. You don't sound good. You better you you need to call a doctor. No, I'll be fine. Now I grew up in a country family. I'm fine. Very few people want to see a doctor, because they don't want to have to pay a bill. Because there was no health insurance way back when. And so, no, you need to have a family doctor. Just go in and see him. And you know, most of the family doctors, man, it, it was it was nothing. There might be ten dollars to go in and say, well, you need a shot, or you need some penicillin, or you need some stitches, or we need to fix that. Or you need something a little more serious, you know, might have an appendix thing or whatever. So you got to have somebody in the family that you go see. No, you're not going to sit here and be sick. We're going to find out what it is and see if we can do something. So uh, have you ever volunteered to spend a few days or evenings with an adult relative that's just returned home from the hospital? Well, yeah, we got a big enough family. You know, somebody had surgery. Uh, it could be something simple. But they can't cook for themselves. They can't clean. Uh, they're, they're in a chair for a while. So, yeah, we go about, hey, we're going to go over the evening. We're going to cook a meal for them for the next five days. We're going to go spend an hour every afternoon when you get home from school. We're going to help clean their house, clean their toilet, vacuum, uh, wash some clothes, wash some dishes. We're just going to help them out. And what I loved is you love growing up thinking that's normal, that it's normal to help, help other people. Uh, know how to uh, aid the comfort of somebody who's, uh, who's probably never going to be well again. And we've had that. We've had some relatives because such a big family. Again, my father had 12 brothers and sisters. My father had 12 brothers and sisters. Huge families. We had people that did well, people that didn't do well, people that were smart, people that were not smart, but they're still family. And, and, and the biggest thing you learn about family is you got to learn how to tell the truth. you just got to learn how to tell the truth. And so we've had relatives. You knew, hey, what's happening? Well, uh, they're dying. They're dying. How do you know? Well, some was just old age. Uh, some, you know, ends up, you know, one got the flu and it wasn't good for somebody their age and passed away of the flu. 
Uh, they were 97, but they got the flu. They never had the flu. At 97, you get the flu. It's like, that's not good. And, and you realize, uh, we didn't, I personally, I didn't think they were going to die, but they did. So we lost them. What happened? Well, you need to, you need to stay healthy and don't get around sick people, you know, and it start because, you know, when you're 40, you do something different than when you were 20. When you're 60, you do something different than when you were 40. When you're 70, you do something different than when you were 60. There's got to be some wisdom through the ages how you think different, you live different, uh, how you love and take care of one another, take care of yourself. Uh, have you ever visited a nursing home or spent time with relatives? And I have. We've had uh, two relatives that were in nursing homes. They weren't able to care for themselves. Uh, they didn't have any kids that can care for them. And so, but we'd go visit them once a week and always take something might be something simple, not something expensive. Uh, one of them loved fruit cakes. I always kept a good fruit cake and take a slice of fruit cake and a fresh cup of coffee. And they were thrilled. We can do well once a week. You know, Joe Allen's coming with a piece of fruit cake and a cup of coffee, and they were thrilled. We didn't have to. We we probably didn't stay no more than ten minutes sometimes because they got so much going on. So, but we did visit. Uh, have you ever volunteered to teach a computer to the elderly? You know, computers weren't around when I was in high school. We didn't have them. <laughs> you know, I graduated in 69. Uh, we just had a computer class my senior year. My senior year. We didn't know that they were going to take over the world. And so uh, I remember when I was working in factory work, when I became an engineer, and a lot of the guys just coming out of school or some of the guys that had been there for a while, all of a sudden we're having to use lasers on these uh, manufacturing machines. And we had guys who refused to learn. I'm not learning how to use that. You got this laser is going to help save money. It's going to help this machine run faster. It's going to get us a raise at Christmas time. It's going to keep us profitable. You have to learn to use this. And some would refuse to learn. I said, Mister, uh, we love you. I want to keep you here, but if you don't learn to use this laser, I'm going to hire some kid out of high school uh, and he'll replace you tomorrow. I, I don't want to do that. You got to stay pliable. And so you got to know how to learn about new technical things and how to do that. I uh, had the, uh, the elderly that are handicapped. Uh, I had uh, an, uh, a grandfather that fell off a big tower, you know, and became crippled. And uh, he's got a tube uh, stuck in his kidney to drain the you know liquid out of his kidney into a big gallon jar next to his wheelchair. And it had to be changed on a daily basis. And, uh, and so when you grew up in a big family, you see a lot of stuff. And so... The one thing that kind of motivated me was, you know, I want to stay healthy as long as I can. So I want to make sure I drink my eight glasses of water, take my basic vitamins, get a good night's sleep. Don't step to three o'clock in the morning watching something that doesn't do any good for you. And so you learn there's certain rules about living a long life and a healthy life that you're going to have to adhere to. Uh, you know, what to do when you discover uh, somebody that needs, uh, have, needs help right now. You know how to change your, your, your schedule around and do something. Now, you can't do everything. We're not the welcome wagon. But as a fan, it's like, hey, hey, we can have, uh, we can have Grandpa come stay with us this week. Can you take him next week? Uh, who can get him the next week? And for a while before uh, Grandpa ever went to a nursing home, we kind of rotated him through the family. Well, the problem was the family was young, and now they're starting to have babies. So now, you know, uh, my mom's just got a brand-new baby. Uh, you know, uh, develop diabetes. The child's got di diabetic, having to get shots every day. Well, mom said, listen, I can't have grandpa stay here. I, I got to keep the house clean, the needles clean. Uh, grandpa's got the, the urine thing he's going on. He can't stay here. And I had, I saw my mom have to make a very, very hard decision because she loved her dad. She loved her family. But it's like, but we can't do this. So eventually we had to put him in a home. And those are never easy decisions, but they're decisions somebody's got to take care of. If you really love them, you're going to do what's right. And you got to kind of think, well, let's think long term. What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? How are we going to fix this thing? Uh, you donated money or goods to a charitable organization. Every year we go down and, you know, we used to, uh, Thanksgiving, help serve food uh, for the, the soup kitchen people. So you go down four hours to help the cook. People come through that don't have a home. Uh, you feed them, you're nice to them, you talk with them, you volunteer. You realize not everybody has a blessed life like you do. They just don't. Uh, we volunteer for literary organizations to go down and help people learn how to read, the local library, and the kids did that for one summer. So go down once a week uh, uh, in the local library, and for two hours, you're going to have somebody come in and teach them how to read. It's not deep. It really isn't. Somebody's realized, you know, I don't know how to read. <laughs> I've got to get a better job, so you got to learn how to do that. 
Um, you you volunteered to, uh, you know, for your local school to help transfer students and adjust their new surroundings. And we had kids that would do that. Hey, this kid comes in, you don't make fun of them. They just come in from another country. Their dad's got a job here in America. They don't speak good English. What can we do to help them? Uh, we can have a, a English class or, or something and help them out. We volunteered at animal shelters, you know. Um, and we talk about, you know, getting your animals spayed or neutered, you know. Don't let those cats keep dropping other kittens, uh, you know, if you can help it. Uh, now, we lived in the country, and we had, I think, one time we had nine cats on the farm. Uh, we didn't feed them because they ate mice, and they stayed real healthy because every farm's got mice running around somewhere. But we didn't have them as a pet. It was different. You know, we got, we have a country cat, and we had country dogs. You know what they do? Well, they chased up out of the yard, and every now and then they drag something dead in the yard. But it was a kind of different kind of a thing. And so uh, you learn how to care for other stuff, other people, other animals, uh you got to learn how to uh, know what to do uh, when your dog or your cat's been injured. And we've had that happen. We've had dogs be run over an old country road, got ran over one time, and uh, we had one that didn't make it and one that survived. Uh, we had one cat that got hit, and uh, he never did look out of one eye very good. His head kind of sideways. But that cat, that cat lived another eight years after being hit on the country road. And so we take it in and, you know, we see the vet. Hey, is this cat going to make it? Yeah. Is this cat going to make it? Nope. You know, we've had to put animals to sleep. And so you learn how to love and care for people. And somebody's got to make the hard decisions. Have you ever house set or pet set for somebody, you know? What are you going to do? Well, uh, they're going to be gone for a while. We're going to take care of their house. My wife and I have done that years ago. A couple of whip on the mountain behind us. And, and they just had a different lifestyle. But they had a big old honking house on the side of the mountain. And uh, very good people, sweet people, but they lived a different life. So we went up and kept their house for a week. I thought, man, I don't know if I could live up here, but it was fascinating. And uh, wash the dishes and did the laundry, mowed the grass, make sure everything was good around the house, and uh, killed a couple of snakes. <laughs> you know, what are you gonna do? Well, they need somebody to watch their house while they're gone, and we're gonna volunteer to do that. We're gonna sleep up here. We'll drive by our house every day for about an hour, make sure things are good there down at the foot of the mountain. So. You need to do stuff for other people. You know, think about people in your community, maybe elderly somebody that's living by themselves. Uh, go buy on a holiday or send a card or drop off an apple pie. Do something simple. If you do that, man, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. So thanks for listening, guys. God bless. Hey, thanks for listening today. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we are here to help you get there. Make sure and go to our website, joemcgeeministries.com. We've got all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.